Hey there, it's Jane with PositivelyJane.net. I have the cutest project that I want to share with you today. And this is a long video because I want to make sure that you know how to make these cutie little purses. This is a collaboration with Becky, Becky Roberts in Concord and Ninth. I have been making Becky's purses for years now before she had stamps and dies. And I, I mean, sorry, no stamps, dies. And I would cut them out by hand. So now I'm loving the fact that we have some dies that I don't have to cut them out by hand. So this is the Concord and Ninth Weekender Handbag Die. It's a large die set, has all the pieces that you need to create these cutie little purses. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I love this Echo Part Welcome Easter um, printed paper and the purses look great with printed paper. I just love the way they work out. You cut two of, this is the main purse die. You cut two of these and it fits on your six by six cardstock perfectly. <clears throat> now, if you notice, the left side needs to be lined up so that the right side fits. And I don't recommend you do something that has really straight lines because your straight lines will probably not be as straight as you'd like. These are the side pieces and the, the, the top part's flat, flatter, fatter, I should say, and the bottom part comes to a point. And I'm trying to line them up because the sides that are in the middle there, those are the ones that are like the straight edge. That's kind of how you judge um, the angle of your pieces. Now, typically this is the quote unquote leather of your purse, but I wanted to make some Easter purses. So I went through my cardstock ring to see which cardstock I wanted to match my um, purses. This is for my straps and my quote unquote leather. And if you want to know how I do my um, cardstock or inks or anything, I have all those links down below for you. I'm really big into cardstock and craft room organization because if you can't organize, you can't find it. If you can't find it, you can't use it. And then that's frustrating. So I'm now laying out all my different pieces, the um, solid color pieces that for my um, purse, it is best if this is a heavyweight cardstock, minimum 80 pounds, 100 pounds is even better because this is gonna take some weight. I wanted to show you that those straps do fit on your regular cutting plate. I'm using the, um, um, what am I using? Spellbinders Platinum 6. And this is what we're going to have. We have two card bases on the bottom. I mean, front and back. I shouldn't say bases. We have two side flaps, four little square things, two straps, and four of the bunnies. And you'll see how that all goes together in just a second. So I'm taking my bone folder. And I'm scoring really well on my um, score lines. It's, you really need to have a really crisp um, score line and if you don't have a bone folder I know they're expensive those Teflon ones but it's highly highly worth it now this is the gusset it's really hard to see but there's three score lines here two and one in a V and or two in a V I should say and one at the top you're gonna fold gently on those you don't have to get your bone folder out and you're just gonna make a little gusset it's like a little you'll see in a sec sorry it's hard to explain. So I'm making a little gusset with those V. I'm going to do that on both sides. We have a front and we have a back. The front and back are put together exactly the same, except you're going to embellish the front with a few cutely little things and the back's going to have the strap that holds the purse together. So let me show you how I did this gusset again. I'm folding up the top and I'm folding in the side so they all meet in the middle at that point. Just trying to give you an idea of how that all shakes down. So this is the, the piece that closes your purse. And so I'm going to glue it to the inside of my purse. Now I'm lining it up and making sure that it's in the middle. I have a little bit of glue and there's my center line there. And I just want to make sure it's centered and then I'm going to line it up straight on that line. That is so I know that I get my purse closure straight. Otherwise, it's always at an angle. And I have these sewing clips, which I like, but they have little teeth on them. So I will show you in a little bit how I use these old hair clips and I will try to link and find you them below. So here's the straight side and here's the curved side. These line up perfectly with the front and back of your purse. And you can see how I'm laying them out. And when you're gluing these together, 
try to get your glue to go the completely to the edges so you don't have any um, areas that will lift up um, because it just won't look right. It'll be kind of flappy. If you, you know, had a purse, you don't have areas that lift up. So just get some glue as close to the edges as you possibly can and stick those down and push them down and just line up the top and the sides. The, and the bottom will fit in just perfectly. And you're going to do that for the front. This is the front because I put the strap closure on the back. That's over on the left. And you're going to do it on the back as well. Typically, these little bunnies are going to be the same color as everything else. Because I wanted to make Easter purses, I thought it would be really fun. And I thought I could make a whole bunch of these for my girlfriends and put some, you can put candy in them. You can put little cards, little notes, um, Hershey kisses fit in perfectly. Whatever you think you want to put in that you think your girlfriends might like. And you can make them for all occasions. That is why I love these so much. So here's the front and the back. And now we're going to do the straps. So in order to get things to fit properly and to lay up properly, you're going to take your bone folder and you're just going to give it a little rub on the other side to curl it up. Do you see how I'm doing that? And I'm going to do that for the both of the handles. And I realized I should have done that for the closure before I started. So I'm doing that now. And I'm going to, that way it bends and it doesn't crease, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So I am lining that up on the edge where those two pieces meet and a little bit on an angle. Do you see that? It's not straight. It's a little bit on an angle because that's how it's going to all lie down. So I'm putting a little bit of glue on where both of the straps go. A little bit of an angle there. And whoop, popping up. And now that's going to go on there. What I just dropped is going to go on there in a second. Um, but I will um, show you how that goes after I glue this down. So I like to do one step at a time and clip it and then glue the next one and clip it. And that just gives it enough time to dry. So when I unclip it, we're not working, we're not worrying about the whole thing falling apart. So I'm going to do the front handle. And I found if I put my clips in the middle in the center right there, as I'm doing this one, you see how I'm trying to get it on an angle there. If I put my clips in the middle, they work much better than I do if I put my clips on the outside. So while that one's drying, I'm going to do the same thing with the handle on the back of the purse. Again, I like to just do one at a time, let it dry, then come back to it. And I love the fact that we have liquid glue now. Back in the day, we didn't have liquid glue and it was rough to get anything to stick. So these are the side pieces. These really need a good crease with your bone folder. And we're going to crease one side and then we're going to curl it just a little bit because it's going to be bendy. You'll see in a second. So I'm going to curl it and then I'm going to fold up the other one. And I'm going to do that for both of these. And I'm doing this because I'm waiting for those handles to dry. So as I'm doing that, I'm making sure I have a really good crease. And then when I'm done with this, I will go back and put those little squarey things, if you want to call them, I don't even know what you call them, um, on the handles. It's where you, you know, when you have a purse, it, hi it hides the edges of your handles. So one, you have two, you have four of them, two for the front, two for the back. Put some glue on them, but we're going to do the back first because the front is a little bit different. We're going to embellish the front of the purse and I haven't cut those pieces out yet. I will cut them out and show you exactly what I'm cutting out. And again, I've been making these purses for years, cutting them out by hand. Um, one thing you can do is you can put glossy accents on some of your leather pieces so it looks like patent leather. Um, I've done that before and that's really fun. Um, it's you just lay out your pieces and then you put your glossy accents like on wax paper. And um, I will do a video tutorial on that in the, in later on in the future. I'm going to do a summer, some few summer bags. So I'm laying those out and those are straight. They don't match the angle of the handle. I don't know if that makes any sense. Let me show you. See how it's straight? Does not match the, handle, uh, the angle of the handle. And I'm going to clip those down as well. 
And I realized, as I said, that these fabric clips are making marks. So I went to my stash and I found these old, old hair clips. I mean, I just goes to show you my age. And they worked much better than the fabric clips. Although the fabric clips did work if that's all you have. Um, I will again, I'll look, I'll try to link to a few extra, a few alternatives for you. So now I'm cutting my buckle and my embellishment. So I have some matte silver cardstock and some glitter pink. And I cut this heart out. I cut out a key and I cut out the buckle. I decided that I didn't want the heart and I went in with a locket instead, which I'll show you in just a second. Here it is. So here's my embellishment pieces. I have a ring, I have a locket, I have a buckle, I have a key, and I have the little tiny strap that everything attaches to. So I wanna give that a little bendy curl as well and set that aside. And the first thing I'm gonna glue down is my ring. So that is just gonna to glue to the end of this leather piece. And I'm just gonna add some glue and I'm gonna glue that down. And you'll see how I do that. You don't need a lot of glue, but you need enough that it sticks because you don't want it to fall apart. And I'm kind of centering that, lining that up so it looks really good. And then I realized I want to put a little glue on the actual ring part because I wanted to make sure that this stuck to the purse. Now, I like to adhere this to the right side of the purse. You could put it on any side that you want. It's totally up to you. And you can have different color handles and things do not have to match this is crafting world we're making things out of paper so you could do whatever you want and another alternative to using glossy accents for patent leather as I just realized when you get to the end of the video is you can um, when I make the sunglasses that go with it is you can use this glossy cardstock and that will look like patent leather which would be cool too so now I'm threading on my locket and my key and I'm gonna glue those two ends together and then I'm also gonna glue that whole thing to that little square leather piece. And I'm showing you this, everything I'm doing right now is in real time. I have edited out a few things, but I wanted to show you, I'm not speeding it up, I wanted to show you exactly how to put this together. Because the first time I put one together, it was a little fiddly, and the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Of course, like anything, like driving or brushing your teeth or cooking a meal. So we're gonna glue that to the back of this piece, center it up really nicely, make sure it's lined up good, and then grab it with my tweezers. And again, I'm gonna adhere that, sorry about the head. Line it up, make sure it's straight, and then I'm gonna clip them both down with the clips. Set those aside to dry. Again, I do everything step so that I can set it aside to dry. So now we're gonna work on the gusset pieces, the side pieces of the purse. Well, that is not a true story. Now we're gonna put the buckle on. So we're gonna thread the buckle on the, on the um, strap. And I did it backwards. I needed to do it the other way. I want more of the buckle showing. Uh, you'll see, I'll take it apart and go, oh, that's not right. And you'll just figure out where you want it to be. You don't want it really close to the edge, but you don't want it so far back either that you can't close your purse. So I put mine about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, and I'm going to glue the both sides of that buckle. And because it's um, a silver cardstock, I'm going to make try to make sure that I don't get any of the glue on the silver part because the glue always shows on your metallic cardstock. So just put a little there, and then if you do get a little overflow of glue, take a really, not a wet cloth, but a hardly wet cloth, just a damp thing, and just wipe it off and kind of shine it as you would a pair of glasses or a window. You can see I have a little glue at the top there, so I did take a, um, a tool and I did clean that glue off. So now you're gonna clip it down taking a tool as you can see and I'm clip I'm just cleaning off that glue because I don't want that to get on my silver cardstock clipping that down and then I'm going to set that aside and now we're going to work on the closure now you're supposed to have these little tiny velcro pieces and if you buy the bundle at Concord and Ninth you get the velcro pieces with it I have this huge roll of velcro pieces that I use for my um 
distress ink distressers. So I just took these and I cut them up. I know that's kind of crazy, but I already had them. And these are sticky on the back. Um, I think I made the first purse a little bit too small. The second one, which I'll show you, I'm going to show you again. And don't, you can fast forward to that second purse, but don't skip the end because that's where the cute little sunglasses are. But I wanted to give it to you twice because I know it's a little difficult and that way you don't have to keep stopping and starting, stopping and starting. So these are sticky already, but I will add extra glue because I realized that the, it needs a little more stickiness and the glue really keeps it adhered down. So I'm cutting them into about, I'm not even sure what size these are, a quarter by three eighths maybe. I don't really know. So I have a hook and a loop and they go right together. I'm just trying to test them the size to make sure they fit well together. So I like to put the hook on the um, closure and the loop on the front of the purse. That way the loop is a little softer. If that Does that make any sense to you? The hook and the loop of the Velcro, one's kind of rough and one's kind of um, smooth. So I put the hook on the closure and that's the hook. I'm showing you the little bits that stick out there. It's got, it's got like the little teeth. So we're gonna put the glue on the back of this if you don't drop it. And it had this, I forgot to cut this off. This one already has these the clear on the back so that I have to peel that off to expose the sticky. Once I get that off, I will add glue. And I've really enjoyed making these purses. I probably made 10 to 20, well, maybe 10 already. And just great occasions. You can do them for Christmas gifts. You can, little gift cards can go in there. I made some last year and I colored some stamps and dies. And I put a, a girl with, with a scarf on and I added a big bow and they're just so fun. And because now we have the dies, it just makes making them so, so much easier than it did when I was cutting them all out by hand. Now, the beauty about cutting them all out by hand is the purses are a little bit bigger, but I love these tiny little purses. I think they're amazing. So I glued that down and of course I'm clipping it and I'm gonna set that aside to dry. Now, what we need to do now is glue the bottom to the top. So I wanna show you, here's the, here's the, this is the back. I don't want that edge to show, so I wanna put the back inside the front. Does that make any sense? So we don't have that raw edge showing. So just make sure you line it up and then get yourself some glue. You can also use double-sided tape here if you choose to. Um, that's totally up to you. Tape runner does not adhere as well as it, it should in these kind of situations, so I really don't recommend tape runner. Sorry about the head. I'm lining it up and trying to make sure that it all lines up, testing the sides, testing the front, making sure that nothing's impeding the closure of this cutie little bag. Oh my gosh. And the inside is so cute as well. I will show you in the next purse how you can make lining for your purse if you don't like what the inside is like. So that's a purse I had made previously and it, I was testing out my Ghirardelli squares. So I grabbed those and then let me get the gusset. So I find for this that eighth inch double-sided tape is the best. Now you can use um, liquid glue. I just, for, there's too much to hold. I can't hold two sides at once with liquid glue. So I'm putting my double-sided tape on both of these gusset pieces. And then when you go to put them on your purse, I'm going to show you how I line up the very first one, but you really don't need to do that. I'm also putting double-sided tape on the side pieces where we did that little V fold. Again, you can use liquid glue and the second purse, I will show you how I use liquid glue. Either one works well there, but I like double-sided tape for the gussets. So I'm going to line it up just so you can get an eyeball of what a quarter of an inch really looks like. You don't want it that far down from the bottom of the purse. Quarter of an inch is probably all you need. And that fold line will line up with the side of the purse perfectly. So I'm just lining that up. I'm showing you a quarter of an inch, lines up perfectly. But when you go to do the other side, you really don't need to line it up. You can just eyeball it. 
Now, when you go to glue the other side, you need to make sure that those bottom pieces are inside of your purse. And I'll show you in a second. And I already moved my clip so it wasn't so heavy. Sorry, this is off screen. I'll get it. So what I, this is what I did. I glued it down. And then you see that flap sticking out? Oh my gosh. How do I get it in now? So I had to rip it off, get some more double-sided tape, and retape it so that I can make sure that that bottom flap is inside. Otherwise, it won't fit. And I was lucky that I didn't push down hard so it did not rip the cardstock. Otherwise, it totally would have ripped. So I'm going to peel this off. This is where you could use liquid glue on these. It might be a little bit easier. But again, make sure they're inside. I'm just moving them in. Not doing anything exciting. This is the fiddly. This is the only fiddly part. And then I'm putting that about a quarter of an inch from the top, lining up the fold to the side. And then that bottom flap, if you can see it, just automatically goes into place. I don't even know how it does it. It's not exactly even, but it's perfect. And I use my bone folder to make sure it's pushed down. And I'll show you the inside of it, what it looks like in just a second. And you can see the side there. Well, it's kind of angled in holding it down, pushing it down, and there you go. It just works perfect. Look at that. So I'll do the exact same thing for the other side. I'm going to show you this one more time. We're going to bring this down a quarter of an inch from the top. We're not going to measure. Your girlfriends are not going to be grabbing your purse and saying, Jane did not do this a quarter of an inch from the top. They're going to think it's so cute and so amazing, and they're going to think you're just the greatest thing since sliced bread. We're peeling all this off again, and I could again put this in fast motion. I wanted to do everything pretty much in real time for you when making these purses. And again, if you want to fast forward to the second one, just look at the picture. It's the exact same, but don't miss the sunglasses at the end because they are the crowning jewel of these purses. And I will also show you what I did with the candy. So I'll, I'm showing you that, making sure it's inside, gluing this piece down, matching the edge to the, the fold of the edge and then that just it just goes right in there don't know why don't know how it's just one of those miracles of life and there is your cutie little purse now the last thing we need to do is glue the the um loop part of the velcro dots to this so i take the piece that i already cut and i'm going to stick it back onto the loop and I don't do it, if, when I put the loop on, I don't keep the, the hook part, or when I do the hook part, I don't put the loop on because I don't want the glue to glue them both together. And again, I got to peel off that little plastic piece that I forgot to peel off earlier. Put some glue on there. And then we're going to clip this down. And this needs time to dry. You really need to make sure that this is dried very well so that when you go to open it, because when you first time you open it, it's hard to open a little bit. So you're going to kind of pull that down. Hold it down. Make sure it's in the center. Get your clippies ready and clip that. And I clip both sides because I just don't want it to move. And there's purse number one. And I'll show you how it all shakes out in just a second. Now we're going to take those Ghirardelli candies and we're just going to cover them with some matching paper. I love um, covering my candies with paper. I don't remember what size I cut these out. Um, you can measure them, maybe one and three quarter inches wide, maybe. I'm not exactly sure. I put a little double-sided tape on the end of each one. I did not wrap the whole Ghirardelli because I would have used too much cardstock to do that. And I just made sure it's right side up, put it on there, folded it over, and I did that for three candies. And I set that aside so while it was drying, I just wanted to wait till everything was dry before I put it back together. So this is purse number two, and this one has a lining. And this is how I cut the lining piece. I just cut the front, not the bottom. And I cut everything exactly the same way as I did before, all the same embellishments, um, solid color cardstock. 
This time I did not use Easter paper. I just did um, pattern paper. I have, this time I used silver, shiny silver um, cardstock for the embellishments. And I'm just laying it all out and showing you that we have two of the linings, four of the side pieces, two of the flat, two of the gussets, two handles. Everything that we had before is all laid out here on my table. So what I'm going to do is do the exact same thing that I did before. Um, I'm going to lay it all out. I'm going to fold everything and I will kind of speed through this just a little bit to show you what I did for this one. And then I will show you how I did the lining for this particular purse. Okay, so we're gonna speed through this one, folding all the edges using the bone folder. Now I did not like the inside of this. That is why I'm doing lining, making the gusset, not the gusset, making the fold, gluing down the closure, lining it up so it's completely straight, using my glass media mat, which I love. I can clean up all the glue, I have grid lines, it's just my favorite work surface ever. I'm clipping that down, putting on my buckle, gluing down my buckle. Now here's my lining. And I'm, what I'm going to do is just cut a smidge, that's my mom's word, a smidge, like not even an eighth off the bottom, just to make sure that when I line it up, it does not show over the top. Nothing worse than having your lining show. Now I'm tapping it with my fingers to make sure I get the glue, all of the edges, putting it in there, and then I'm lining up the top. That's really all I care about, and of course the sides, but not the bottom. So I'm bending my handles again, just like I did before. Not bending, I'm folding my hand. What am I doing to my handles? Curling my handles again, just like I did before, laying them out and clipping them down. Okay, I'm putting on my four pieces. I got two in the back, and then I'm going to do the two in the front and do the, I'm gonna do the same embellishments that I did before. There is another element to this die set that you can add like a little banner with a stamping on it that says Happy Easter or something and you can, you can glue it to the ring. I just didn't have anything small enough that said Happy Easter so I did chose not to do that. But I put on my locket, I put on my key, I'm gluing down that little piece. I don't even know what you call it. And I'm gonna put that on my purse as well make sure it's straight, clip it down, clip from the middle, and that is the front. Now I'm curling this gusset as well, making sure that my edges are folded really, that my creases are very, very crisp. And this time I'm gonna put double-sided tape on the gussets, but I'm gonna put um, glue on the, um, the, the other pieces the ones that we folded in the little V. I'll show you that you can do it with glue and it works just as easily as it does with double-sided tape. And again, this is the fiddliest part um, of the whole thing. Gluing my bottom to my top with the bottom on the inside, testing to make sure that everything is okay. You really need to test, nothing worse than making a purse that it can't close it when you're all finished. And here I am putting on the gussets and I'm making sure that my bottom piece is on the inside. I'm adding some liquid glue. Sorry, it's off screen a little bit there. You're hearing those. This is why I do double-sided and glue because I just can't hold all those pieces together. And I'm using, a, I'm having to use my Crystal Catania, but anything long and skinny to fit inside there will really help you get it all adhered down. Doing the second side little liquid glue, po pushing it inside, lining that up, and then the other side, they just, they just magically fall into place. It's, it's a miracle. And there is purse number two. We need to put the Velcro pieces on the buckle, and I'm going to cut those exactly as I did before, only this time I took off the clear part and I just left the sticky, and I'm not gonna show you how to do all this because this is kind of boring. But I will show you that I how I glue, I made a bigger piece this time. Do you see that? It's a little longer. Um, 
I don't know whether it made a difference, but it made me feel better. So I guess that's all that matters. Okay, so now we're going to go back to, we're going to glue down this um, loop part of the purse. And we're going to glue that down, clip it down really well. And again, this is where you really need to make sure that you leave it alone a little bit so that it glues really well and line it up straight. I'm going to clip both sides because that is how I roll. I like both sides. So back to the other purse. It's a little fiddly to get it off the first time because you stuck it down really well. But after that, it doesn't. It comes off really, really easily. And I'm going to show you how the Ghirardelli chocolates fit right in here. You can add a little bit of Easter grass or some shred, which I did on the second purse. I just didn't think about it on the first purse. And look how cutie that is. And wait until you see the final embellishment. It really puts it all together. So what I like to do, one of my favorite things to do is to wrap Hershey Nuggets. I cut these to one inches by three inches and I use liquid glue, liquid, liquid glue and I stick them down. So I'm going to show you how I do one of them and then they're all the same. So a little glue, I hold it on the back, I wrap it around tight, kind of grab it, hold it, grab it. Don't let go or you glued. Put a little glue there, hold it down and then lay it on your work surface. Sometimes they pop off. For the most part though, they do not. All right, we are going to grab the embellishment, which is the Concord and Ninth Bright Eyes die from Becky Roberts. And this is the sunglasses. So we're gonna cut the frames out of um, colored cardstock and we're going to cut the lenses. Erin Lee Creative has an amazing cardstock. It's glossy black and it is awesome. So we're going to cut all of the pieces out of what we need, cards, uh, colored cardstock and the glossy cardstock. Okay, so here they are. We're putting a little glue on the frames. Dot it with your finger to make sure it does not ooze out onto that glossy black cardstock. And then we're going to, there's a little fold line on the um, stems of the glasses. And we're going to fold those over, put a little glue on those and line them up with our glasses. And this is the final step in these making these purses. I did a pink pair of glasses and I did a yellow pair of glasses. But what's a pair of sunglasses without some bling? So Honey Bee has these amazing rhinestones in all different colors. This is Ocean Breeze. I chose the rhinestone color um, for this pair and I chose a different color for the second pair. So here is your glasses getting a little clean. I mean, here's your, here's your purse with the glasses and look how cute that is with the heart and the key that actually move candy inside add a little tag that says Merry Christmas Merry Christmas oh my gosh I'm losing my mind add a little tag that says Happy Easter and there you go so here's the yellow glasses on these here's the nuggets inside it opens up great I added some paper shred and I just really hope that you could go out and make yourself some purses I'm sorry about the long video, but I really needed to show you how to do it because I know how important it was for me when I was learning it that the video was slow. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for hanging out to the end. I really appreciate it. And go on out and make yourself some purses, not just for Easter, but for any occasion and give them to your girlfriends to make them feel better. Thank you so much. And as usual, all the products are linked in the YouTube description or head on over to my blog post for some more detailed and close-up pictures. And if you want to know about craft room organization, I've linked all that as well.